Be sure to catch the next episode of Just Talking It Up on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. Hey, you forgot our names. No. You did? You forgot our names. Don't be silly. I'm Janet. You're a crash. See? (laughs) She's just like a goose. She wakes up in a new world every day. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 29th of January. All of the ingredients are coming together for a significant severe weather threat for Alabama early tomorrow morning. So a lot to talk about. Let's get in there and take a look. We'll start with some of the sky cam shots. These were captured at uh, mid-afternoon today. That's the Tuscaloosa sky cam. It is a mostly cloudy, breezy, and very mild, if not warm day for this time of the year. And a few sprinkles around today, but nothing really significant. This is the Chiha sky cam. On the eastern side of the state, pretty much the same situation there. They are locked in with clouds. And way down south, that's our sky cam on the Alabama Gulf Coast. Looks like if you were down there today, you'd pretty much own that entire beach. Uh, Their dew points are well up in the 60s. In fact, the dew point is at 67 down there at mid-afternoon. That's about as high as it gets in wintertime. And, of course, that is the air advecting up this way for the event tomorrow morning. There's your upper support, a very deep trough uh, that is progressive. It's advancing onto the east. And already severe weather watches cover a large chunk of the nation uh, east of that trough axis. Temperature is this afternoon as warm as 77 in Montgomery. Woo, boy. Uh, Tuscaloosa and Anniston, 72. The cooler readings are up in northeast Alabama. Uh, Gadsden's the cool spot. They've only got 61. Uh, Birmingham sitting at 65. And, of course, the cloud cover has a lot to do with that variation. Uh, But if anything, temperatures will not drop at all tonight with a strong south wind. In fact, in many places like Gadsden and Fort Payne, temperatures should actually rise. And then behind that front, it's much colder out across the Rockies where they've got some snow issues out there. Uh, You can see a lot of winter weather issues for the western part of the nation back in the cold air. In that transformation zone, uh, the counties in uh, yellow, those are tornado watch areas. Uh, We've got a severe thunderstorm box for parts of north Texas and Uh, You go up north, some flood watches in effect for parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. And back in the cold air up there, some winter weather issues with freezing rain. So a very busy uh, watch warning map. Uh, This is the convective situation. These are the current watches. We've got the severe thunderstorm watch for much of central Texas. And then tornado watches, roughly from Dallas-Fort Worth all the way up to St. Louis. Uh, This is the convective outlook for the rest of today and tonight. The moderate risk has been expanded a bit. Uh, to almost touch the northwestern corner of Alabama. And surrounding that, the standard slight risk runs all the way from Houston to near Chicago and Indianapolis. And uh, again, this is valid through 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And uh, you can see the uh, uh, eastern part of the slight risk is pretty much up to uh, Birmingham. Uh, Very high numbers continue in the uh, probabilities. This is the tornado percentage, the chance of a tornado within 25 miles of a given point. And 15% is very high. Keep in mind, tornadoes, even big ones, are very small compared to a whole county. Uh, And that extends now well into north Mississippi and west Tennessee. And that's the chance of damaging wind, uh, wind greater than 58 miles per hour, basically a 50-50 proposition there uh, for much of the Mid-South. And again, that almost touches the northwest Alabama border. And then tomorrow, this is your standard slight risk for much of Alabama. And this begins at 6 a.m. tomorrow. But we note within that there is an enhancement. And uh, there's a pretty decent chance, I think, uh, those guys at SPC will put up a moderate risk where you see the red, the 30% bracket there. And that includes much of East and South Alabama in advance of that front. So, uh, th- again, not a lot has changed. The main issue, it's the timing, and we'll talk about that as we go. Uh, this is the QPF chart, the rain for the next five days. This carries us through Sunday morning, and this is showing rain amounts of about one to one and a half inches. And uh, we think this stuff should be moving pretty quickly to eliminate any major flooding problems, although some localized issues are certainly possible. All right, this is tomorrow at noon off the GFS. This is the 12Z run. And again, uh, obviously, tremendous forcing with that big trough. And down below that, the 12Z runs are indeed a little slower. And uh, let's get in there and take a look at the RPM, the Rapid Precision Mesoscale Model. This is 4 a.m. And look what it's done here. It's got the line on the front back around Memphis, and you've got a, a prefrontal trough with another line forming over northwest Alabama. And, you know, instead of a line, it could be more cellular, meaning there might be a few tornadoes involved at 4 o'clock in the morning over northwest Alabama. 
Uh, so again, we encourage everybody to be sure you got your weather radio working, programmed properly, batteries are fresh and ready to go in case we do see some pre-dawn warnings. Uh, this is 7 a.m. The main convective band is over the northwestern corner of the state. But notice ahead of that, it's got some development. And again, anything that forms out ahead of that thing could very well uh, you know, show rotation. And there could be a few isolated tornadoes out there. Uh, and the concern is a little higher now for tornado development ahead of the line. And within the line where you've got breaks or kinks, there could be a few rotating segments in through there. But again, note the slower progression. So 7 a.m., the main line is still west of Tuscaloosa. 10 o'clock, the line is coming through Birmingham. This is mid-morning. Uh, the line runs from Scottsboro down to Aniana, Birmingham, Centerville, Brent, almost all the way down to Mobile. And obviously with the main line, the, the true risk is from damaging straight-line winds, maybe widespread-type damaging straight-line winds. And then by 1 o'clock, the uh, line is pushing down toward Auburn and Opelika. Uh, this is the, the weather service in Birmingham. They kind of put this graphic together. Kind of confirming what you just saw there on the RPM. Uh, so we could begin to see some issues in far west and northwest Alabama as early as, uh, you know, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and then it just progresses steadily eastward. And really all modes of severe weather a distinct possibility. Some of the severe weather parameters, this is the lift and index or the instability, the buoyancy of the air, uh, the ability of air parcels to rise freely. And the lifted index uh, goes down to a uh, minus 5 in spots. Uh, don't have the chart to show you here the surface-based instability. Surface-based CAPE values are running at uh, almost 500 joules now. And notice there's some instability as far north as Cleveland and Detroit. Uh, so there's, there's obviously very sufficient uh, instability. And also, let me say, this is valid at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. This shows you the slower progression here. Uh, you know, we've been showing you the 6 o'clock in the morning maps. Well, this is 9 o'clock in the morning. So, again, this thing, uh, you know, instead of being maybe a midnight to 9 o'clock thing, now it's going to be a 3 a.m. to noon thing. Uh, this is the Energy Helicity Index. Numbers are quite high uh, over uh, North Alabama up into Tennessee. This is a combination of shear and instability and lift. Uh, here's a look at the bulk shear between the surface and 850 millibars. Uh, the veering of the wind within the lower 5,000 feet of the atmosphere. And again, those numbers are quite high, uh, which is one of the reasons we're concerned about the possibility of a few tornadoes in advance of the squall line if discrete cells can form. And again, this is the map that probably impresses me the most. This is the low-level jet. This is the wind speed at about 5,000 feet off the ground at 850 millibars. And again, the winds are howling screaming up there 60 and 70 knots and as we have discussed many times here with, with this type setup it's not going to take a lot to transfer that down to the surface so uh, there's great concern over a, a lot of tree and power line damage uh, if you've got loose objects around the yard you know batten down the hatches secure that stuff tonight uh, because even away from storms, it's going to be very windy tonight. Uh, obviously, tomorrow as the line comes through and in the wake of that line as well. So 3 a.m. in West Alabama, uh, maybe 1 or 2 o'clock for places like Auburn, Opelika. And uh, we will be watching. Uh, inevitably, watches and warnings will follow. Thursday, it's out of here. We got dry, stable, cool air. Uh, temperatures will struggle to get out of the 40s. Same thing on Friday. In fact, the latest GFS is showing a high of only 45 on Friday uh, with the low in the 20s Friday morning. So a sharply colder Thursday and Friday, but the sky will be sunny. Saturday as we start the weekend, uh, Saturday morning is going to be cold. Uh, the latest guidance is down to 25. That means some of the colder pockets could even reach the upper teens Saturday morning. High should be in the 50s. A cold front north of here. This is Saturday night at midnight. The front is creeping in really in dry fashion. There could be a few sprinkles or a snow flurry somewhere in there, but uh, the chance is very limited because of limited moisture. And then on Sunday, a reinforcing surge of dry air arrives, but it's not really colder air. A uh, high Sunday should be in the upper 50s, and we'll start the day probably in the upper 30s. Next week on Monday, strong bit of energy over Illinois, a surface low near Chicago, 1,002 millibars with a front coming down in here. And this is suggesting we might better mention a chance of showers as early as Monday afternoon. Uh, this is Monday night at midnight. Drier air begins to return. And on Tuesday, that looks like a dry day. Seasonal, highs in the 50s, lows in the 30s. And again, that's an interesting feature off the uh, New England coast that our friends up there will have to watch to see if they might have some wind and uh, snow and rain issues up there. 
What they're a little deeper. This is the 12th of February. Uh, cold front coming in with a chance of showers and storms. Into the forecast on Valentine's Day, the 14th. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking for the big western ridge in the eastern trough for a big cold shot. That's not quite there, and that's suggesting a departing system, and temperatures there would be very close to average for the time of the year, if that's correct. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. Notes in the blog. Next video here, uh, tomorrow morning, and that's assuming that the weather's calm enough to do that. If not, we'll have it by tomorrow afternoon. And again, check with the blog for running updates on the weather situation, alabamawx.com, and watch us on ABC 3340 on the live stream or the television side this evening at 4 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. Who's got time to listen to boring radio shows? If you're going to listen to something, listen to something good like Eavesdrop. My favorite thing about Christmas is not the presents. No. And it's not the million no. Christmas parties. And it's not playing Dirty Santa. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's about relationships. relationships. I, know. I know exactly where you're going it, with that. Yeah. It, it just is. It is. And take the time what if this is your last christmas yeah. and you never know just talking it up they may use the name jesus in a terrible way when they hit their thumb with a you know <laughs> with a with a hammer by accident on right. saturday afternoon when they're working on their car but don't bring jesus into a song and give him a beer it ain't right hey i know a few of those <laughs> folks myself bama talk show but before we head for the Dome, we got business to take care of at home. So making plans for the throwdown in downtown Atlanta, we'll have to wait until that post-game rammer jammer rings in the postseason for Bama and the off-season for the barn. Auburn unleashed. That magical score that, that Auburn fans remember, 17-16, came out of that game. And Bill Newton was responsible for the, for the chant, punt, Bama, punt. Bill, thank you for joining us. Uh, good afternoon, Adam. I appreciate y'all having me as uh, the first guest on your show. Worldview Matters. And, you know, we've been talking about a number of things. Last couple of times we talked about socialism. We moved from Islam to socialism, and we were going to continue today to do the same thing. But a lot of things have happened in the world in the past 10 days. Uh, it's oh, heated yeah. up again in, in, in Israel. So I thought it would be a good uh, chance for us to talk about some of the things that relate to worldview as it relates to the Israeli situation and Egypt and all that's going on in the Middle East. High School Heroes. And the plane goes right through the bridge and doesn't catch on fire. There's tons of stuff, man. Uh, tons of unrealistic stuff, but hey, it was really cool, actually. Warning, any of these shows can be addictive and they are all fun. Listen on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com.